Hi guys, Tap here, hope you're all keeping well. Yes, it is. Time for another video. It is all about this, the Porsche Taycan. But not just any Porsche Taycan, mine. I've got this for ages, so we don't have to rush through it. You'll know if you're borrowing a car to film, you kind of got to smash through the video as quickly as possible. And you probably, I know I do, I always forget something, but I <laughs> want to cover absolutely everything about this car in a lot of videos, get a lot of content out there really kind of sharing with you what that ownership experience is like because I've come from an ice car to one of these and yeah it's quite a transition but it's so far proving to be pretty good. In this video I want to talk about regen braking, how it works, what it's all about and the differences between ice and one of these when you're kind of just going about you're pootling around uh, in town but should be good do stay tuned do like do sub because it should be very informative for you guys if you're looking at an ev and even more so if you're looking at a taycan but let's go for a drive and here we are in the porsche taycan i believe that's how you pronounce it porsche taycan i think that's how the germans would say it there was some guy on the channel recently in the comment section who was quite disappointed because he was adamant it should be pronounced taycon t-i-e-c-o-n I don't really think it matters, does it? I mean, we know what the car is. We know it's an EV made by Porsche. Pronounce something like Taycan. Anyway, I believe it's from the USA. Uh, I've got quite a large audience in the USA, which is great. Big shout out to you. But to him, I would say, I'd like to hear you pronounce this. Yes. The bottle of unpronounceable sauce. That little bit at the bottom there. And I don't know what you're thinking. Why has he got a bottle of the unpronounceable sauce in his car? Well, it's something that we Brits carry around with us at all times because you never know when you're going to have that grilled cheese or cheese on toast, as we like to call it. But this video is all about this car. I've had it now for just over a week and I have to say it's really very good. This video, I want to focus specifically on the regen side of things, that brake recuperation something that EVs do as they're cruising along because it's a kind of new experience if you're used to an ICE car, uh, not an ICE car as in friendly ICE, uh, internal combustion engine car. Those of you that watch the channel will know I have indeed just come over from a McLaren 570S. So this car is very different in that it has no engine. But the first thing that has struck me about this car being out in it is the build quality and the ride of this thing. It is like nothing else on earth. It's so quiet in this cabin. The only noise I can really hear right now is the rattle coming from the camera mount, which I'm using to film this video on. It's absolutely insane just how quiet and I think you know the German build quality has always been something we've aspired to right I mean the, the first E46 M uh, sorry E46 BMW I had it was a 330cd the build quality of that was like nothing else I'd ever experienced and you know the VAG group Porsche and and the likes, I think they're just some of the best built cars you can get on the market. I've always been very impressed with the Audi build quality and there is not a single rattle or crack in this car. It is like, it is so quiet, it's like a mouse in a spacesuit out in space. It is just so quiet, listen. You can't hear a thing. It's so impressively put together. And of course, no engine as well. So you could argue that it's the engine that provides the excitement. But I want to talk about the, the regen. Because in some EVs, it's possible to drive with just one foot so that when you come off the throttle the car starts to go into regen mode and recuperate so what exactly is happening when the car is regen well basically it is using the electric motors of the car on the on here there's two as electric generators we know that's how generators work you spin a coil of copper within a magnet 
and it generates electricity. It's how most of our election electricity is generated. So that is the fundamental principle upon which this operates, so that when you come off the throttle, the car will slow down. Now in this car, it's got two specific modes with regen. So you can have regen completely off, and in this car, it's pretty impressive because if you turn regen off with this little battery button on the dashboard, it, it will coast like nothing else I've ever known. It will coast, I think it, it feels like it will get right to the edge of a cliff and then pretty much fall off. It just feels like it will go forever now. That is a new feature in the 22 model Taycan, the 22 model year, right? And it's, I don't think it's a true mechanical decoupling. It is just the motor simulating as if it was coasting. So I'm not too sure on the scientifics of it, but it just coasts forever and ever. Even, it seems like it coasts uphill. And the problem with that is you can kind of quite easily roll up the back of people. So. When you turn the regen on, when you come off the throttle, the car will slow down. Slowly, not aggressively, it is a very gradual slowdown. Kind of similar, I guess, to if you were out in the average ice car. So something you should be relatively familiar with. Now, Porsche, I understand, have not gone for incredibly aggressive regen braking because they want to keep the feel of the car as close as possible to their combustion engine cars, and they've done a pretty good job of that in this car. You, you kind of get that driving experience, and now to brake in this car, you have to apply the brake pedal, but we'll come on to that in a bit because it's got another regen mode as well. So technically there's kind of two regen modes in this. If you hold down that battery button, it will go into auto regen mode. And this is probably the best of the bunch. So how does this one work? Well, if you're coasting along in the car, if you're driving along the car and you come off the gas and it's safe to do so, the car will continue to coast, but it will also use the sensors available around the car to detect what's around it. And if you start to roll up against the back of another car, it will begin to slow you down. So it's actually very clever in that respect. And I find that I spend most of my time in this car in that automatic regen mode. For me, it works very nicely because you kind of does a little bit of that driving for you when you're around town in that it's kind of just watching what's ahead of you and then brake a little bit for you. So, how do the actual brakes work? Well, in this thing, the brakes don't really work. And by that I mean, it apparently it hardly ever will use the actual brakes. Yes, I'm told that pretty much all the braking that you do in the average drive is via regen or recuperation, which is very, very impressive. This car can apparently produce up to 270 kilowatts of regen braking, which is insane. It's a quarter of a megawatt of regen braking. So very, very impressive on the numbers. And when you come onto the brakes in this, it will gradually increase the amount of regen braking that you apply with that foot. Uh, and then the more you press, it will continue to increase the regen braking until it can no longer increase and then transition to the brakes themselves, which are carbon ceramics and very, very capable. And here's the thing, because it hardly ever uses the actual brakes, so I'm told, the brake pads on these have a timed service interval of six years. Yes, six years which is insane. So the car hardly ever uses its actual brakes. So very, very impressive bit of engineering. Now, one thing that I'm not too keen on because of that is 
is the way it comes to a stop. Now this car is air suspension, and that is one of the reasons that the ride is so good in this car. It just soaks up all the bumps absolutely beautifully, and I'll do a whole, this basically want to get a lot more content out on this car, so there'll be many more videos to come. There'll be specific videos focused on the features and technology, so if you're in the market for a Taycan, then please do subscribe and hopefully a lot of the content I get out there will be a benefit to you. But the way this car comes to a stop is a bit bizarre because it's air suspension, which is great, good, I guess, and bad a little bit. It does kind of float around a little bit. And when you do come to a full stop gradually at the lights or wherever, the car will kind of just rock backwards and forwards ever so slightly a little bit you know that kind of when it's coming to a settle and i think that's that could be because it's not actually using the the brakes themselves uh, it's using that regen braking and you're sort of doing it via mechanical motors and there's probably a bit more scope for travel so you get this kind of weird rock and if you've been in one or you've got a Taycan, it's just something to expect but it's a minor, it's an absolute minor. The, the quality of the drive in this thing, how smooth it is, is just out of this world. And it's funny because this car doesn't necessarily want you to drive it fast. It, it doesn't kind of egg you on it, like, you, like you'd want to do if you were in perhaps a, a McLaren or a Lambo with a V10 purring away you kind of want to drive that a bit harder wouldn't you because it's just a far fancier car in terms of the noise this is an EV right so it doesn't really kind of egg you on to drive like a maniac you just kind of float about in it but what is good to know is that it does indeed have performance this thing because when you put your foot down in it the pickup is absolutely bonkers honestly i've i've never known anything quite like it the instant response of this car is almost laughable it's just giddy it really is giddy so this is the turbo s the full fat porsche taycan turbo s it produces 616 brake horsepower and a whopping 774 pounds foot of torque, which is available from rest, from standstill. That's why this thing differs from your average ICE car. You have that available from zero miles an hour. So you don't need to wait for anything to spool up. You don't need to wait for the revs to get to a certain point. It just pulls. And it's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. So 616 brake, 774 pounds of torque. Now, that's on normal driving. When you go into overboost mode, so launch mode, it'll push you up to a whopping 750 bhp, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's crazy power, right? So it is a very, very fast car. Now, it weighs a lot. There is no escaping that, but it really hides it very well. This car has PDCC, Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control, do a separate video on that. But it does, it hides the weight really well. And how does the S differ from the turbo, the standard, the bog standard turbo, if you can call it that? Well, I believe it is just down to the, everything else is the same bar the front motor. In this, it's a 600 amp system for the front motor versus a 300 amp in the standard turbo. That's where what gives you that differentiation. And it's a very different driving experience to an ICE car. You'll know with, with big V8s and V10s if you've been in them, and please do hurry up and get in them if you haven't because they're not gonna be around for much longer. I think that's the harsh reality of the situation. But if you can get out in one, uh, you'll notice that the more you rev up the rev range in one of those, the more you get up the rev range, the faster those cars will get. That's because the faster an, an, uh, sorry, an ICE car is working, 
faster that engine is working, the more BHP it's producing. So, the, the thing with an electric motor is, and this is a bit of geekery here, there is something called back EMF. Now, it's a bit nerdy, this, but essentially, the faster an electric motor goes in one direction, the more electrical resistance there is trying to push it back in the other direction. That's called back EMF. So, with this car, this is where it really differs from an ICE car. The faster you're going in this, the slower it becomes. You really notice the acceleration tail off when you get above a certain speed. So these cars, you see them when they're on the Autobahn, uh, when they sort of get sort of above 120, they really tail off. And the max speed of this car is about 160 miles an hour, I think. Not that you're going to be doing that on the roads, of course, but 160 miles an hour for a supercar, which you could kind of call this a supercar, is these days is pretty slow. And I don't know why that is the limit for this car. I think it's probably just the limits of what the motor can deliver. Now, this has a drivetrain on it, uh, two-speed gearbox. The lower ratio is eight turns of the wheel to one turn of the motor. The higher ratio is 15 turns of the wheel to one turn of the motor. It uses that low ratio to launch with, right? So the transition between the two motors is absolutely seamless. So the, the drive of this car is very, very good indeed. And in this video, I really wanted to just cover that regen, the scope of that regen in, in, and how it works in this car because it, it's very, very different to uh, what you know for most EVs, right? So I wanted to just give you a quick overview in this video, a quick intro drive to the car. There's gonna be loads more content coming. There's loads of how to, deep, deep diving into all the features, the functions, but I think the first thing to cover is probably about the regen, right? Because it really is the biggest difference I see about when you're driving an EV car. And that is it for this one. Thanks for watching. Do take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.